It's day one, the start of week two, uh, John. Where would you say we are in terms of progress at these talks? Um, I'm feeling quite optimistic at the moment, actually. We had a very good meeting yesterday with the Chinese minister who just got in, and he was positive, and there are signs that China's position might be shifting, so we'll see. He'll, he's got a press conference at 12.30, so he may well say more then. And what, does, what is the shift in their position? He's showing a lot more flexibility over what China might do. As you probably heard, China is under great pressure to take on some sort of binding commitment in the future, and they're in, increasingly indicating that they will do that. He uses little phrases like, China is a responsible country, and things like that. So, yeah, so it's, it's good news, I think. At the and why I'm not quite sure how far, how far he's going, but, but we'll see, we'll see. Yeah. Why is it significant if China takes a binding commitment? What are the, what are the implications for the talks? And they won't take one here, but it's a question of when they take it. It's simply that China is by far the biggest emitter in the world now. They've overtaken America some time ago. Um, so China doing something is really good for the climate. I mean, they are doing stuff at home. I mean, they've got a very good energy efficiency program, a big renewables program. They'll have a cap and trade scheme soon. So they are doing stuff at home. But a, a real commitment internationally to do something is very important. And um, we've heard America say that it, it won't kind of take steps until China does. If, if we get signals from China that, that it is moving forward, are we likely to see a broader shift in the politics here? It will be interesting to see if we, if we call the Americans bluff because we don't think they can do much at home. Um, they're probably doing as much as they can do. I think the administration itself is probably willing to d do more, but the Congress won't pass any legislation on climate change, so it's a hard one for them. They have to do everything by direct regulation from the administration because nothing will pass through the Congress. You know. And, of course, all the politicians are turning up uh, this week, starting work tomorrow. Yep. Are we expecting fireworks? What are they going to be talking about? Um, the big things we'll be talking about are the same as the meeting started on last week, which is a continuation of the Kyoto Protocol and the start of negotiations on a new and bigger all-inclusive treaty, all inclusive by all-inclusive I mean all countries type treaty um, later on. The question is how much later on? And the G77 and China, the developing country grouping is saying 2020, but 2020 is too late um, because um, emissions need to peak and decline well before that, preferably in about 2015. So um, we're trying to push them forward um, to 2015. We'll see. But. And of course, lots of the NGOs here have been following these talks for a long time. What's the sense within that community? Is it optimistic? Is it panicky? Are you, well, give, us a, give us a sense of the feeling at these talks. It, it varies. We're now at the stage where there's lots of little rumours fly round and round and we keep trying to check them out. Um, but I think the big problem is still America, although India has been misbehaving a bit in some of the groups. And there are rumours that Brazil have, but there are only rumours about Brazil. Yeah. And with regards to the Kyoto Protocol, Christiana Figueres is the, kind of the head of these, these talks here. She seemed relatively optimistic over the weekend. What would you say the status of the Kyoto Protocol is going to be at the end of this week if you had to make some kind of prediction? Um, it's difficult to say right now whether we'll get just a political declaration on the Kyoto Protocol or whether we'll get real ratification of it. And ratification takes a while, so, and there are various options in between. Um, I think the EU are pushing quite hard for it, and they're being pushed very hard by the G77 and China to do that. So I think the Kyoto Protocol will happen in some form or another, um, because there's no one there to block it, really. If the EU is going to do it and the G77 and China want it, and the US won't block it because they're not in it anyway, and they're gonna, not going to join it. So it should go through, but it's a question of in what form. Yeah. And we've heard a lot about Canada and their role possibly withdrawing for the Kyoto Protocol. How has that story moved forward, and what are the broader implications? I think Canada is still going to withdraw. I mean, it, all the Canadian NGOs do, um, and they've made statements to that back home. So I think they'll leave. It's the, it's the old story with Japan, Canada, Russia, they want basically to be in the same treaty as the United States. And as the United States isn't in Kyoto, they don't want to be in it. So it sounds like it's all to play for for the second week and there's a lot of work to be done, um, but relatively optimistic. At the moment, yeah, although bad things could still happen. But yeah, <laughs> We'll leave it on that note. Thank you, John. <laughs>